Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. In this Abacus tutorial, we are going to see how to read ODB files using Python scripts. This video is a continuation of earlier video in this series, Python scripting in Abacus tutorial 2. So if you did not see that video, I highly encourage you to see that video first. Link is in the description box. To quickly summarize what we did in previous tutorial video, we created a square RVE of polymer and that polymer material has randomly dispersed inclusion in it. Then we fixed the bottom edge and we applied displacement boundary condition on the top edge. Inclusions are much stiffer than the matrix. So Young's modulus of inclusion is different. Young's modulus of matrix is different. And our aim is to identify homogenized Young's modulus for this whole RVE. And we did 10 iterations of this and we created 10 jobs and submitted 10 jobs. So each RVE has different kind of pattern of inclusions. But number of inclusions are same. And while submitting a job, what another thing we did is we created a set for this bottom edge and we created a history output request for this set of bottom edge for RF2. RF2 is nothing but reaction force in Y direction. Therefore, we have these 10 ODB files and we want a Python script to go into these ODB files and read the results. So in this tutorial, we will write a Python script which will do all these things. And what those things are, first of all, we want our Python script to open ODB file. Then it should access the data from history output request that we created, which we created over here. And that data will be reaction force in Y direction for all the nodes on this bottom edge. Once it access that data, we want Python script to add all those RF2 values together. So we will get overall reaction force in Y direction. Then we want Python script to calculate overall Young's modulus. And that how we will do is we will divide this reaction force by area to calculate overall stress. We will calculate the strain using this displacement boundary condition. And we can calculate Young's modulus as stress by strain. Once that Young's modulus is calculated, we want Python script to write that value into a text file and then repeat this process for several ODB files. As I showed, we have 10 ODB files. So we have to repeat this process 10 times. And once we have those 10 different Young's moduluses, we want Python script to calculate average of all those homogenized Young's modulus and write that as well in that same text file. And finally, close everything. Close the text file and close all the ODB files. This is the Python script to do that. If you want this Python script, I already uploaded it in the GitHub profile of this channel. The link is in description box below. So you can directly click on that link, which will redirect you over here. And then you can find that Python file. You can download this script as well. Just go back to this part and click on this code and say download zip file. You will have your own Python script and you can change it and modify it as whatever you want because the best way to learn is just playing with the script and seeing what happens. Also, if you go to not real engineering page, you will see all other repositories. These have all the codes which I used for other videos on this channel. Okay, so let me quickly tell you what this code does is here. You have to set maximum number of iterations. This means how many ODB files you have. Then we are creating a text file to write the results. And this is a big for loop, which will be repeated for whatever number of iterations you set. If you set number of iterations to 11, this loop will be repeated for 10 times. On this line, you can set the ODB name. In our case, ODB name starts with job one and go up to job 10. So I put this counter Q and this will also go from one to 10. So it will change every time. You can set path over here. If all ODBs are in working directory, you don't have to change anything over here. Then we are opening the ODB and creating that ODB object. Once we have that ODB object, we are going to step one and we are accessing all the history regions. So history regions will be a list of all the nodes for which history output is requested. So this will give the list of all the nodes from bottom edge. Every time we have to set total load to zero first. Now don't worry about this part. So usually what happens is in this list of all the history regions, the first entry will not be a node. It will be just some name. So that's why we have to skip that first entry. That's why I'm putting this if loop over here so that we will skip the first entry and we will start from and we will start from the second entry. Then we will go into each node. So this is the loop to go into each node and we will access the RF2 data. Now, as this is a history output, this RF2 data will have two columns. The first column will be time and the second column will be RF2 values. 
so we will know how rf2 is changing with respect to time but we don't want that we don't want to know all the rf2 values we are just interested in the last rf2 value so what i am doing is once we have those all rf2 data i am taking the second column which is rf2 values and if you put over here one that will be the second column and if you put over here zero that will be the first column which will have time values so this we don't need at all i just put it here to let you understand but we don't need this at all what we need is rf2 values and in that also we don't want all the rf2 values we just want the last rf2 value which was at the end of simulation so for that you can just put minus 1 it will give you the last value and that will be the load which we are interested in and then we will just add all the loads for all those points and we will have the total load once we have the total load we know the area of the bottom edge we will divide that by that area which is 20 over here to calculate stress and we can calculate strain by displacement by original length we know the displacement we applied it when we created the job then again original length we know which is 20 in this case and using these stress and strain we can calculate homogenized Young's modulus now this is from ODB1 and we also want the average of homogenized Young's modulus from all 10 ODBs. Therefore, to calculate average, I'm adding all these homogenized Young's moduluses over here. And at the end, for average, I'm dividing that by maximum number of iterations. Remember here, you have to reduce 1 because in this case, when you set here 11, actually, we are having 10 ODBs. Then we are writing those both values. So first, we are writing homogenized Young's modulus from every job, from every ODB. And then when we calculate the average at the end, we will write averaged homogenized Young's modulus as well. And over here, we are closing the text file. And here we are closing the ODB files, which we are opening. Now let's start with Abacus CAE and run this script. Here I have those 10 ODB files. So first set up your working directory, make sure ODB files are in working directory. Then go to this file, run script, and we will run now read ODB file. Usually it is very quick. Now it is already done. Now we will go to our working directory. And if you go to working directory, you will see this results from ODB text file, which we just created. And if you open this, it will have homogenized Young's modulus from every job. So 10 jobs, 10 homogenized Young's modulus. And finally, the average of those 10 homogenized Young's modulus. Now, if you remember from the previous video, the Young's modulus of inclusion was 1000 megapascal. Young's modulus of matrix was 100 megapascal. And this is homogenized Young's modulus, which is in between 100 and 1000. And it is closer to 100 because volume fraction of inclusion is, I think, around 0.2 or 0.3. I'm not sure. But it is in between and closer to matrix. So I think this makes sense. And if you go back to Abacus, if you see the results, you will see no ODB is open or nothing because we closed also all the ODBs. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and visit our channel's GitHub profile to get all the codes. I upload new video on every Monday. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.